I've been big into axes for quite a few years now. You guys have been following for a while. You know that. And um, there's not a whole lot that I'm really looking for. You see a whole lineup of axes back here. And I've had lots come in. And I've sold lots of, and gave a few away. There's not a whole lot I'm looking for at this point. I've seen most of it. However, there is one axe that came into my uh, grass recently that I've been looking for for years. And that is a Norlin saddle axe or a little cruiser axe. So the Norlin axe is in general an American company that has been closed down for quite a few years. I've been, I've been wanting one of those for a while anyways. I've had a, been close to getting a couple like the, the Hudson Bay pattern or what they call their tomahawk. Coming close but I still haven't acquired one. And then this was just like the, the golden goose here. Um, I, I think one of the first times I've seen it was Wrangler Star. Uh, did one for Dave Canterbury and I just fell in love with it. I did not realize how small it was and uh, the reason why I couldn't get it, first of all they're hard to find, they're pretty rare and second of all they're quite expensive. You go on uh, eBay and places like that and try to pick them up and they're lots of times two, three, four hundred bucks for one of these mounted on a handle and such but uh, really expensive so I just could never get one. Now when I was contacted this is actually not my axe. It is in absolute pristine condition. But it's, it's not mine. However, I now have my own because the guy I'm doing this one for just so happened to have a second one. Not in quite as good a condition, but still, in my, uh, in my opinion, pristine. So this is mine. And this is his. And this is the one we're going to be working on today. I believe this axe is for his son. So we are going to do something real special for them. Now let's take a minute to appreciate just how beautiful this thing is. Look at the scale, first of all. It is the tiniest little double bit I've ever seen. Look at the size of the eye compared to my fingers there. It's just, uh, it is so teeny. Uh, let's see. Compare it to a pocket knife, 940 here. It is such a little axe and it, that it's just such a cool cool item where have you ever seen something like that and that stamp is so beautiful he did a great job cleaning this up this is how it arrived to me uh, needs a sharpening needs a handle needs a sheath bunch of work to do so happy to have gotten one of these in my hands so thank you very much real happy and excited to work on it now we've got to do something real special this young boy so here is a handle I'm working on. This will make the axe roughly 16 inches overall, which from what I'm seeing online is about factory. So I'm just carving it down from a big chunk of hickory here. And it is looking good so far. I'm liking the profile. I think I still need to take a little bit of meat out of this dimension. And we've got to shape down the eyes. Just rough cut there now. We've got to build and shape that shoulder, even everything out. But it's looking great. Going to be using a big round rasp here now. I'm just going to start working that shoulder, even and everything out. I carved the bulk of this down, first with an axe, then a draw knife, then I just roughed it on my belt sander just to take out some of the carving marks, and it's a little easier to get things symmetrical with the belt sander. And now, we're going to work it down in the rest of the ways by hand. bunch of filing, sanding and stock removal and this thing is just perfect. I just did a rough fit. Uh, I didn't pound it down but I just managed to knock it into about right here. So about um, about a half inch from where it's going to be sitting. So uh, and it just slid in there beautifully. Just the right amount of tension so we're going to be able to get a nice wedge in there. I think this handle is going to be perfect. I cut out a bunch of that bulk to make this smaller. Again, it's for a, it's for a boy, and it's a small head, so you're going to want a small handle anyways. Nice and light, beautifully grained piece of hickory. This thing is good. I can't wait for the oil to hit it. It's going to be lovely. Now, before we go ahead and mount this, we might as well go and put the edges on our axe here. I'll rough these in on the, on the belt grinder.
So I worked that bit up to a worn 220 grit belt and then I threw it on my bench grinder here on a felt wheel with some compound and here is what we have. I'm going to leave it just like that because this thing is so insanely sharp. I've been, uh, I've been using lately a technique more like Council Tool uses on their axes and they create very close to a flat grind. The convexing is very mild and, uh, and the edge that you get is just so so incredible. It's still nice and thick here still lots of meat behind that edge. I didn't grind it out too thin especially knowing that the axe is going to belong to uh, a younger person. Generally they're a little bit rougher on their tools so we have a bevel. Now anytime you sharpen up a bit beforehand, before you hang it, let's just look at that glare by the way, just off that 220 grit belt and felt wheel, that edge is crazy sharp. But anytime you sharpen like this beforehand, wrap that bit up good before you do anything else. Because if you start working with it in this shape, you are asking for a lot of trouble. And I do not want a trip to the emergency room today. Okay, here goes the exciting stuff. Now what I'll do is just a little bit of boiled linseed oil on the eye here. Just, it, it greases the eye and lets the uh, Let's it slide on a little easier, it moisturizes the wood where we won't be able to get at it later and because it greases things it allows you to to pound the uh, pound it in a little further than you might get otherwise so there we have it with it greased up now it's gonna I expect it to go in that eye pretty easily and let me determine which side mm, doesn't matter either side is this is good. Okay, so I can push it up until about a half inch from the top, just like that. So that's perfect for me. Now I'm going to tap the bottom of my handle and really drive that in there. It is seating just perfectly. we have wood curled out all the way around there so we are sitting right down it looks flawless all the way around and we have a nice amount of wood up here just look at the proportion of this handle I'm super proud of the length oh it just feels great I think this is going to be one beautiful beautiful setup I'm just going to set this in my voice here until we get the wedge ready I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue on my wedge, just a little touch, just to ensure it's not going to back out later on. I'm using an oak wedge here, a wedge that, uh, it's not a store-bought wedge, it's a wedge I made myself. And then it's tapered slightly in both dimensions, so it's tapered on this dimension as you can see. And I have tapered it here to reduce that pressure, because you've got lots of room for expansion in the middle not so much on those ends and I don't want to split anything out here I've seen too many pictures recently of guys splitting out the eyes of their axe I prefer to use an axe for driving my wedges because it's flat surface on flat surface and by just angling ever so slightly I can uh, I can drive my wedge in different directions. If you're using something smaller than your wedge and you're hitting on one side you almost always fracture your wedge and we don't want that. That's not what we want to do. Listen to your project at this point. Don't overforce anything. Kind of feel it out. Again with the boiled linseed oil now. 
And we really watch the color come into this wood. We see it come to life. On the edge here, some beautiful rays. 